Hey everyone! Welcome to a fabulous episode of Nile at Night with me, Nile Patel. <laughs> if you haven't guessed already, uh, I'm actually the designer here at Jesse James Beads, and my job is to bring you fun, quick, cool, inspirational projects using the ever glamorous Jesse James Beads. And it is always my pleasure from week to week to bring you guys fun new ideas. We do this twice a week, every Thursday and Saturday should it allow for it. Um, tonight's a bit weird because we're on a Wednesday, but either way, you can catch me on Thursdays at um, 6 p.m. Central or Saturdays at 10 o'clock in the morning uh, at Central Time for our Wake and Make, uh, which is equally as fun and entertaining <laughs> as I can possibly make it. And um, for these tutorials, I try and keep them short, keep them concise, and definitely love to talk about Jesse James Beads. Now, if you guys caught me on the last uh, Wake and Make that we did, we made something really glamorous and fabulous, and I am all over this. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. These earrings are what we made. Now, aren't they just amazing? I mean, so fun to wear, I think, super colorful. They're on a hoop, so it's very summery. I think that these are just absolutely super fabulous. I love them so much. And so if you want to learn how to make these, which I do encourage because if y'all been getting these beads, we want you to use them, right? And my job is to bring you ideas. So you can check out these tutorials in a couple different spots. First is our YouTube channel. So go to youtube.com and check out or search for Jesse James Beads and you'll definitely find these tutorials and so much more. We have a huge catalog of different ideas and um, tutorials on there. The other way, uh, the other place that you could check this out is the website. So go to www.jessejamesbeads.com and in the very top uh, right hand side you'll see a video tutorial link um, and in it is a ton of videos starring yours truly <laughs> with fun videos and um, tutorials. So check them out. Now tonight's project I'm uh, excited about I have these beautiful materials and I have no idea what I'm going to do with them, but that's kind of the fun part because uh, I get to design live with you guys and come to some problem solving and solutions with uh, these beautiful beads and chains that I have sitting in front of me. So what I want to do is flip the camera over and show you guys what I'm working with. So let's do this. There we go. Okay. Look at this. This is the Vegas chain, uh, is what it's called. Isn't that just fun? Now, I thought being... Whoops, I'm sorry, guys. It's uh, trying to focus here. There we go. Um, super sparkly, super fun. I love the chevron design. I think that that is absolutely stellar. And so I definitely want to use that in my design today. And then, let's see what else I got. I got this beautiful tomato chain is I believe what it's called. And isn't that just fun? Look at all these beautiful little crystals that are um, hand wired together. Can you believe that? That is so cool. I love this. So I wanna use these two together because I think that would be a great combination. And lately I have been all over the white label collection here at Jesse James Beads. And particularly I cannot get my eye off of the Night Blooming Garden. I think this mix just speaks to me because of how much color there is, how many different styles are in it, um, so many beautiful sparklies, <laughs> if you will. So this is absolutely glorious. Look at that. Just so pretty. So I picked out some beads from it, um, including these lovely little pom-poms that I, they're fabric actually, um, something I've not really seen before. And they do have a little hook at the top, so we're going to try and use that in today's design. Um, as well as this super fun large bead. Um, I believe this came in the in, uh, Inspirations mix. So I was pretty, pretty excited about that one. I think that one is absolutely gorgeous. And then I found some other knickknack beads that I think um, color-wise they go well with the tomato chain, the cherry tomato chain here. So... Uh, again, I just uh, I dumped out the entire white label um, Night Blooming Garden into a bowl <laughs> and then just kind of started picking from there. So 
you're asking yourselves, as well as I am, what do we do with these materials? Well, that's a good question. I have no idea, so let's design something. Um, let's see. I love this chain. I think I want to use it more as a uh, design um, in interruption is almost what I like to categorize it as. And so I think what I want to do is have this become the main part of my necklace. And so I am going to... Let me move some stuff around here so I get some more work surface so I can show you guys what I'm doing here. But I have this long chain and I kind of want to interrupt with a piece of the um, chevron chain here, the Vegas chain. So I think what I want to do is cut a part of that out and have it intersect. Um, a Y style necklace is always fun to do. So I think that's what I'm going to do with this. And so let me let me measure out a little bit. I'm going to leave this much, which is roughly um, maybe about four inches. I'm going to leave that alone because I want that to dangle at the bottom. And I want this gold chain to come up a certain part. And then I think I'm going to have that connect there. So that'll give me a fun little interruption while keeping the delicate um, streamlined look of this particular chain which is really quite beautiful and I don't want to do too much to it um, since it is already so gorgeous. So, so now that we know what we're starting with, the idea here is how do we connect it all? Well, that's a good question. I have no clue, but we're going to figure this out together <laughs> as always. Um, it looks like I've got a little hole here that I could work with, but I just need to cut a part of this chain out. So I'm going to use my cutters. Let me come to my toolbox here at the side and grab some cutters. Go. I'm just using a pair of Zoran cutters to get into get into that and uh, kind of just trimming that off so that came off pretty nicely. I've got some wire here. I've also got some split rings um, which I haven't used too much before. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to connect that with a split ring maybe? Um, rather than wire wrapping it, which could look messy. So let me give that a shot and see how that goes. I'm just going to use my bent chain nose pliers to apply this. Split rings can be tricky. Um, what I like to do is I just, I mean, lucky for me, this one's kind of soft. But there's a couple things I want to do. First is I want to make sure that my split here doesn't overlap. If I can get a little closer. Um, it looks like this one really doesn't because I have a little bit of a gap there. The reason being is that it's not going to fit on the two wires at once whenever I put this thing on. Um, I do want a little bit of a gap there so I can have it free flowing, which let me connect this real quick and you can see what I'm talking about. You can see that within the split ring, I have a nice little gap of just wire by itself. This is a coiled wire that's stacked and then that is the part that's not. So pretty cool. I think that worked out well. And I think I'm going to connect that to my bead chain here. So once again, I'll probably have to open it up, but that's not really a big deal. I don't think. Let's see if I could do it this way. And I'm just going to go in through there. I may have to get my Oops, my bent nose to do some of the holding for me though. Let's see. I like these Zoran ones because the nose is very, very fine, um, which is perfect for getting into the nitty gritty here and detail work. So let's see if I could do this. Here we go. And all I'm doing is just turning it around now. So that's easy enough. So it looks like it all connected pretty quickly and easily. Um, I like the split ring as well because I know that stuff's not going to fall out on me. Oh, I love that already. Isn't that just a great little like combination of different styles there? I think that's so beautiful. All right. So now i got to determine how long I want this to be. I'm actually not going to put... Um, I'm not going to put a clasp on here because I don't think it needs one. I want to make this super long in that case. So what I think I want to do is probably measure about 
I don't know, what does this look like? Maybe about eight inches? Well, probably more than that, probably around 10. I think I'm gonna do 10 inches of this. Just as a nice interruption. And I'm just gonna eyeball it and cut it. Now, I recommend, because obviously you guys will be making this for yourselves or a loved one. Um, and so I recommend getting a proper measure, but seeing as to how I never wear anything I make, <laughs> um, it's different for me. So let's see. I think I cut in the wrong spot, guys. This chain um, does have a little hook connected to it, so I want to make sure that next time I don't cut that. Um, let me see if I can cut this part off, though. There we go. So that's easy. So now I have a full hook <laughs> instead of a half cut one. So that's great. Um, now I'm going to take another split ring and connect those together. Whoops, let's get this on camera. There we go. I'm gonna connect that together. So let me see if I can grab a split ring. So grabbing that. Some of, uh, I think some of you are commenting on here that you have a plier for split rings, which is wonderful. Um, I think I have one somewhere in my stash. Ooh, guys, check this out. So here's where I'm saying when a split ring overlaps, that's what you do not want because that will be very crowded um, within my design components that are that I'm trying to connect. So what I'm gonna do is actually open it up and trim out a little bit with my Zeron cutters. So I don't need to do too much, um, but I think right there maybe it's probably good enough. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now I'm just gonna connect both of them at once this time. I do wanna make sure, well, actually I take that back. I don't want to connect them at the same time. I wanna make sure that everything stays untangled um, and that nothing is going haywire. So what I'll do is I'll connect this one first, kind of shake off my chain here and then connect the other side. That way I don't have things that sort of tangle up and look wonky when you wear it. So I think this side is pretty good. Now you can see that my split ring is a little bit distorted and I'll show you how to fix that. But before I do that, I wanna connect, um, I'm gonna go ahead and connect my chain onto it. So let's see if I can get in here like that. Connect this guy into him. And then simply just fasten him in. There we go. So if you have a wonky chain, all I do is I just work it back and forth until um, until it's pretty much back to square one, which is looks like it got there pretty easily. Um, pressing the coils against each other usually does the trick. There we go. So beautiful, as you can see, everything is staying nice and streamlined and super straight, which is what we want. So that's great. Now I get to decorate my bottom area here with all this beautiful chain. So what I think I wanna do is I love this large bead and I wanna put him at the bottom, just like that. I think they'll give it some nice visual weight as well as um, in a literal sense of weight <laughs> and uh, just hang down where it's supposed to. So what I think I wanna do is I wanna do a couple things. I wanna make sure that there's a bead on either side of this larger bead because the hole is so big. So I'm going back to my collection of little beads here and I'm just gonna pick out a couple that I think will match with my chain. Um, hmm, there's so many options to choose from. I think I like that guy. Maybe put the same one at the bottom here. So that might be a nice little contrast. Seeing as to how I have that color in the pom-poms as well, I think that'll be perfect. So I'm gonna break out into my wire. I'm just gonna use some craft wire. Um, and I'm going to actually make wrapped loops. That way I know for sure that my beads won't fall out. So let's do that. Just cut that guy. And let's make a quick little wire wrap loop. I'm going to bend this at a 90 degree angle, just like that. Put in my round nose pliers and start to sculpt the wire around. Whoops, try and do this on camera, right? <laughs> there we go. Always forget where the camera is. 
I get uh, I get too excited there, I guess. Um, I don't really have anything. Well, actually, you know what? I can go ahead and connect. Um, I just opened that up, and I didn't realize why I was doing it until I realized I needed to connect something. So I'm just going to slip that in before I uh, wrap this loop around. I'm just going to grab it with my bent nose and then do that. Just wrap the smaller wire around the big wire. Really easy. Practice does make perfect, um, and having soft craft wire does the trick certainly as well. So that looks really good. Um, where's my cutters? There they are. Just gonna go ahead and trim that out. Perfect, perfect. If you need to tuck in this little end before putting on your beads, by all means, do so. All right, put this guy on, put this guy on, and put this guy on. Now, I was contemplating if I wanted some sort of a tassel with this. Um, so before I make my loop, I kind of wanted to see what this looks like, which I really actually like. Um, there's something about this chaotic color combination that um, that just seems to work, I think. And I think that's part of the beauty of the midnight, I mean, of the night blooming garden. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that. And before I complete this loop, I'm going to slip the tassel in so they're all connected together. There we go. I like to take my round nose pliers off of the form as I'm bending it around, as you guys have witnessed a couple times already. I think it makes my loops a little bit more perfect um, because I'm repositioning the pliers that make it more comfortable for me to create that loop. So it looks like I didn't pull my wire out enough. So let's push him out, push this in. There we go. Beautiful. And now if I can grasp this together, there we go. I'm just going to work that around. Beautiful. Cut it, cut and tuck. That's all, that's all we need to do here. I like how quick these projects go because I can build a necklace design really quickly. Um, without even knowing what I'm doing half the time design-wise. <laughs> but that's the fun part, right, guys? Okay, so I have a beautiful little little end there with my Y-style necklace, and now I kind of want to pull these elements up to just give it a nice little embellishment. Um, so I can just kind of play with these elements and put them kind of where I think they would be really good. So maybe something like that. We could even have something up here that connects to where the Y is, which might be kind of fun. Let me push this around so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But if we have that connection, maybe we could put these up here just as a way to embellish it. And then we have this long cord that goes to this other spot. So that might be kind of fun. So let's do that. I am going to use my normal jump rings to connect the bobbles. You could use the split rings. Um, I don't think in this case it's necessary because it's not a huge mechanical issue um, of where they are, especially from a connection point of standpoint. Um, this is just a bobble, so there's no supporting weight or anything. Um, so I don't think it should fall out, crossing our fingers. <laughs> but if you feel insecure, by all means, definitely use a split ring. Okay, put that there. I love these guys. They are they feel soft for one thing, and I don't know why that's important, but um, I just I love the colors that are on it. It's fun to work with. So that was easy, and I think I'm gonna need a couple head pins to wrap this up. And so I've got some sitting out here. Now I think I might run into the same problem where my head pin goes through, unfortunately. So let's put a let's put a colorful bead at the bottom because that's always a fun little fix. What else do I got in here of this beautiful mix? I've got this fun pink one. I mean, that might, that's probably my same issue though. <laughs> Can't use that one. Darn it. Let's do this one. It's a beautiful sparkly crackled one. Cool. So I'm kind of thinking about it. Maybe I don't love that one as much. Um, or that one looks pretty. Let's do that one. It's funny how you could talk yourself out of this um, just with designing. 
I don't know if you guys talk out loud when you design. Of course, it's, I guess, the difference of being on camera. <laughs> um, but that looks good to me. So I'm just going to make a simple loop on here. The, this wire for my head pin is actually quite stiff and um, a little bit brittle. So I think the in the grand scheme of things, just doing a simple loop is going to be sufficient enough. And I'm actually going to connect it directly to the split ring that's up there. And so from a supportive um, from a supportive standpoint, I think that should be pretty good. There we go. Again, it is quite stiff, so that's, that's always a bonus for these head pins. There we go. Put that through. Guys, we're almost done. I've got one more bead to do. I have a complete design already. Sweet. So I think I'm going to put him maybe right there. That way I have some sort of evenly dispersed fun. Don't want to put the fun too much in one area, right? We want to disperse some of it. So it looks like I don't need a bead at this one, so it's perfect. Um, I'm just going to do another little head pin, a simple loop on this head pin. Call it good. Easy peasy. We like easy projects, especially just got off work and... Uh, no need to add any stress, right? We want to do fun projects. Fun and easy. All right, last one, guys. Here we go. Push this in. Boom. There you go. Just a simple little flirty necklace with this beautiful little tassel at the bottom. So I can't show you all at once here, so I'm going to flip the camera around and show you all at once. There we go. All right. That was fun. So I can show you, because I know it was kind of focusing in and out, um, but now I can show you the design as a whole. So we have this beautiful chain, and we attach these gorgeous beads from the Night Blooming Garden together. So now you can just really throw it on and be out the door. So it's perfect, right? <laughs> see if I can get this off. Ah, that was so much fun, guys. I love this piece. I can't wait to photograph it and post it for you here on Facebook. And if you love this tutorial, please check out the many, many more that I do for Jesse James Beads. You can do this in two different spots. The first is the website. So go to www.jessejamesbeads.com and check out the very up uh, top menu on the right hand side there's a video tutorials link that you will definitely not want to miss um, tons of inspiration in there we also post them to youtube so go to youtube.com and uh just type in jesse james beads and you will find us there now if you guys like me i have a brand of my own as well it's called silver silk and more let me show you what that looks like silver silk is a beautifully uh knitted wire it's a it's a machine made knitted wire and um, so much fun to use. It's a beautiful chain. There's several different lines. Um, you can search it on Facebook. You do this. <laughs> search for it on Facebook because I'm on there. I'm on Instagram and the website is silversilkonline.com. Um, I am as well doing tutorials on my Facebook, on my Facebook called Tuesday Toots. So you won't want to miss that. So give us a like, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, all of the above. Uh, I can't wait to see you guys again on Saturday, 10 o'clock in the morning, Central Time, or 11 o'clock Eastern Time for our Wake and Make uh, tutorial. I have another br brilliant, blah, blah, fabulous project. I was trying to combine brilliant and fabulous into one word, but I haven't quite figured out what that word is. <laughs> so it'll be fun, regardless. All right, guys, keep it fun, keep it inspirational, and keep it Jesse James Beads, because what more do you want, right? I don't think I need any more. So, with that, I leave you. Have a fabulous evening, and we love you guys. Good night.